Matt, welcome back to the Alfred Dunhill Hill Lynx Championship. It's a bit of a different week from last week in a lot of different ways, so I mean it must make a difference coming on to a week like this straight after Ryder Cup when it's a week that you enjoy so much, that the family are here and um, that really is a great experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously playing with my mum again, which is pretty special. Um, but yeah, ju just, just looking forward to this week. Obviously been looking forward to it for a while since um, me and mum decided to play again. And uh, yeah, it should be, uh, as long as the weather stays all right, it'll be great. And it's, look, it's a family group for you, your brothers in that grouping as well, looking it forward is, to that? yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, I was very surprised that, that we got that draw again, actually. Um, but yeah, it's um, always, always nice to play with Alex and um, obviously to play with my mum as well. It's uh, pretty surreal. So um, yeah, to do it again like we did last year is, is incredible. Excellent. Okay, so we'll go to the floor for some questions. Where are we starting over here with John? Uh, Matt, did anything go wrong last week? Uh, well, we, we lost Saturday, you know, we lost the Saturday session, didn't we? Um, but, um, no, I think it was, you know, I would say there was obviously a, a concerning spell at, at uh, probably about three o'clock on the, on Sunday. Um, I think there was a moment of time there that it was a bit like, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Um, but I think uh, on the whole, it was, you know, it, it very much went to, to Luke's plan. And, um, and uh, yeah, obviously it was pretty, uh, pretty special week. And down Matt, to Bernie in the front. What time did you get this, hit the sack on Monday morning? Oh, like one thirty, so nothing, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Looking back on that week, how would you sort of desc describe the whole sort of three days? What went on in, in the bus that after the winning, the press conferences and everything? And just how would you describe the week? Yeah, it was uh, an amazing week. Uh, it really was. It, um, you know, you, you go into the event beforehand, um, even with it being at home. We obviously kind of were given a little bit more of a chance. Um, but, you know, you look nine months out, six months out, three months out, it, it was, oh, USA, they've got so much depth. Um, it's going to be really difficult for Europe to win. And um, I think that kind of shows how good the result is, um, given all what happened before it, really, with, with everything, um, you know, the, the players that they have and uh, the depth that they have. Um, for us to, to go out there and, and play as, as well as we did and, and you know win the Ryder Cup back was uh, just showed sort of how, how well we played. Okay, we'll go over to Camilla on the right. That was obviously your first home Ryder Cup. Slightly disappointing the first two away ones. What was the difference for you? Like what was the experience like of a home Ryder Cup? It's just the, the support that you get. Um, it's just a huge difference. It's you know from um, being in the US, you're not you're not given anything. You know that there's no cheering for you really. I mean, the the one in 2016, I barely played, so you know I didn't really feel like I had any, even like with family and friends, didn't really feel I had any sort of support out there. And then 21, there was obviously COVID, so there was no European fans. So it was very much US based, and um, you come home to Europe, and it's you know you you like you can't do any wrong. Um, they're right behind you from the moment you step on the first tee and um, walk into every walk in every single hole. You've got people cheering left and right, and um, I think that's what makes it so special being at home. And that's why you know I think you know the European players tend to feel like we you know we get a little bit better. Would you say that that's like the most positive Ryder Cup experience you've had? Obviously, the win helps. Oh yeah, but I'll be honest, that's not hard. <laughs> Okay, and over here on the left. Uh, last week, John Rahm, sports psychologist, was asked how he helps his players deal with pressure. And he basically said, you have to find something that, you, that comes easy for you, but that you can do really aggressively. Do you connect with that? And if so, what do you lean on when the pressure goes up that comes easy that you can be aggressive with? Um... 
feel like it's a difficult que question to answer, really. I think when you're under pressure, I wouldn't say there's anything that really comes easy. Um, you know, you might have a certain part of your game that's a strength and, and you, you try and lean into, but I wouldn't say that I have anything in particular that I think about during being under pressure that I, I lean on in particular. Um, me personally, that's uh, it's not really something that I, I've thought about before. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's a difficult one to answer. Okay, back to Camilla here. <laughs> Is this becoming a bit of a special week for your family? And uh, was there any chance your dad would ever try and make it a four ball? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is definitely making. It is definitely a special week. Um, I think. Uh, I think my yeah, my dad would would love to play, but um, you know, I think Alex has got to do something special before he can start picking and choosing his partners. So, um, yeah, it's 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 just so nice to be here. The, the you know the history of the old course in general and. Um, the three golf courses that we play are, are, are fantastic. So, of, of the three, is there one that you feel particularly suits you better? Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think any of them suit, suit my game. Um, I, I've said that before when playing St Andrews, and um, yeah, I don't think any of them suit, suit my game in particular. But um, yeah, I, I just enjoy playing them. It's it's just um, they're all great golf courses, great layouts. Um, I think for this format, I think that's what makes it enjoyable. You know, it's not high rough and you got to hit fairways. It's it's pretty enjoyable and laid back, which is what makes it such a nice week. And over to Martin on the right. Matt, sorry, I missed the first couple of questions. You've waited patiently to enjoy a high in a Ryder Cup. Did it exceed expectations? Yeah, I mean, it was weird. It, it was a mixed probably emotions for me really I mean <clears throat> I think to get my first four ball point on um, or to get my first point on on Friday was uh, I said it after I, after we won it was one of the greatest days I've ever had on the golf course and that's not even a question it, it was by by some distance it really it was just amazing um, obviously after that didn't really play as well as I would have liked uh, I played really well in practice and, and didn't take that to the golf course and um, you know not re to not sort of come in and support the team those last two days like that was disappointing to me like that, that hurt a lot um, but you know it's interesting I, I spoke to Joe Root yesterday um, to ask him a question about you know being part of a team and not necessarily feeling like you've contributed much, you know, how it's, it's new to me, you know, I'm not, I've not, it's an individual game and, um, you know, I've, I don't have to worry about letting anyone else down. It's just my, it's just myself, um, week in, week out. But when you're part of a team and you don't feel like you've contributed, but the team's won, it's kind of a weird feeling. You know, I, I look back at my last two and, I didn't contribute, but we lost. It's like, well, I can accept that more, you know, whereas you feel like you almost can't celebrate as much because you've not done as much. Um, but Joe gave me some great advice and it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's the way it is. You've got to understand that you, you're part of something bigger than, than yourself. It's not, you know, and, and I know that. I know it's not, it's definitely not about myself. It's about us as a team and, and that's why we do so well. But it was interesting kind of emotions for me because obviously disappointing to not do better for myself but obviously you know absolutely delighted to to win as you alluded to alex is just starting out but the progress he's made so far the brothers playing in a rider cup down the road is not beyond the realms of possibility is it no not at all not at all um you know you look at the molinaris they've done it um, you look at the Hogards, they've got a great chance of doing it as well. Uh, me and Alex hopefully have a great chance of doing it. Um, to be able to do that with him would be, you know, incredibly special. And um, we, we obviously got some good practice in the, Z the Zurich event this year. Um, so hopefully that might be, you know, a sign of things to come. OK, back to Bernie, front line. Matt, it's probably a bit too early to be talking about captain for 2025, but Thomas was sort of saying yesterday, and it probably will take place, that, be, that there should be a lot of debriefing amongst the players as to who the next captain should be. Do you look at it that way as well? Yeah, I think uh, everyone should be asked. Um, you know, I think one thing that 
I was speaking to um, Eduardo about, he kind of was speaking to me about it really, is, you know, you, you have Luke obviously doing this home home one, see how that went, that obviously went really well, his planning, everything, all his meticulous detail was, was very, very good. Um, and, you know, do you go, okay, well, let's give him a chance to, to do in two years in America, because doing an away one is, is completely different and it's much harder. And it's, you almost think, do you kind of do that cycle? Do you give a, a new captain a home one to start with, let him kind of find his feet a little bit, see how that goes, and then let him do the away one as well? And that, that way you've got some continuation of previous processes and um, rather than kind of just brand new every, every time. Okay, back across to John. Right. Uh, I remember uh, Nicholas Corsatz telling me how pleased he was that he was the last man standing at Medina in 2012 in the celebration. One day after he sent a pretty feeble effort, but um, have you any idea who was the, the last man? I have no idea who was the last man standing now, no. I do remember 2016, I, I seem to remember coming down and I want to say Sully was like still half asleep on the sofa or a beanbag or something, someone, someone was, but... Uh, I don't think there was any of that this this time round, but uh, everyone very much enjoyed themselves. Yeah. Okay, and I think finally we'll come to Martin. Matt, just um, circling back to the family stuff, can you talk specifically about the influence of your mum on your career? Yeah, I think um, you know, mum wouldn't be this first to say, "Oh, I told him how to swing it," or told him to go and take this lesson or anything like that. I think the you know the thing about my mum was that you know she was just always so supportive and she'd take me here there and everywhere to go play tournaments or for a golf lesson or you know she she sacrificed her own weekends and time and um to go and take me and my brother around where we needed to go for for various things so I think that's such a I mean, just goes without saying, it, it's such a huge thing for her to do, um, to to give us that opportunity of, of having success. And then, um, you know, I wouldn't say this is like a repayment playing in the Dunhill, but this is, you know, it certainly is a, a nice thing to be able to, to play with her in this, yeah. Okay, thank you, Matt. Right. Thank Good you. luck to you and the family this week. Thanks. <laughs> to watch another DP World Tour video, click here. And to subscribe, click here.